Hello and welcome to Maths with Jay. We're going to use Euler's formula to prove this trig identity, so let's start by writing down Euler's formula. So that's Euler's formula, e to the power of i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. Now because we've got only sine theta involved in the identity that we're proving, we don't want the cos theta there. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite Euler's formula, replacing the theta by negative theta. So that will give us e to the minus i theta, and cosine of negative theta is the same as cos theta, because cosine is, a, is an even function, so we've got cos theta as before. But sine of negative theta is minus the sine of theta. So we've then got minus i sine theta. And now we can combine those two to eliminate the cos theta. So basically we're going to subtract the second of those formulae from the first. And that will give us, when we divide, divide by 2i, that will give us that sine theta is equal to 1 over 2i times e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. And it will also be useful to replace theta by n theta. So let's see what happens then. We'll have sine of n theta. Let's put it in brackets to highlight that. And all we're doing is replacing each occurrence of theta by n theta. But it will be clearer if we write e to the n i theta in here and minus e to the minus n i theta in there. So that will help us with our proof. It's also useful to uh, note down that, um, of course, i is the square root of negative 1. So if we square that, we get negative 1. And if we square that, so we're going to get i to the fourth, it's negative 1 times negative 1. So that's going to be 1. So that will come in useful later on as well. So I think we're ready to start. Right, so we've got sine theta. And we want to know what sine theta to the fifth is. So let's just write down what sine theta is and raise it to the power of 5 and we'll do each bit separately so we've got we've got the 1 over 2i all to the fifth well 1 to the fifth is just 1 isn't it so we'll leave that as it is and then we've got e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta and that's all to the power of 5. So the first bit is straightforward. We've got 1 over 2 to the power of 5, so that's going to be 32, and i to the power of 5. And then we've got something that's like a plus b all to the power of n. So what we're using here is our binomial expansion. So what you might like to do is use Pascal's triangle for the coefficients. So let's just note down what that is over here. So we're simply writing down 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And we're getting nearer to the row we want. So the row we actually want, we've got a power of 5, so we want the row where we've got the 5, 4 plus 6 is 10. So the relevant row is that one. So we know, we know our coefficients are going to be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So first term is going to be e to the i theta all to the power of 5. And then we've got a coefficient of 5. And we'll have our e to the i theta 
to the power of 4, so that power drops by 1. And then our other term is minus e to the minus i theta, so we've got one of those. And then on to the next term, so our next coefficient is 10. And then we're dropping the power of e to the i theta by 1 to get us 3. And minus e to the minus i theta is now increasing to the power of 2. And next term we'll have a coefficient of 10, decrease the power of the first term to 2, and increase the power of the second one to 3. Next coefficient is 5 e to the i theta, there's only one of those now, and minus e to the minus i theta, so increase to 4. And then our last term, I think we're going to get rid of uh, Pascal's triangle for this to fit it in. And so the last term is just 1 of minus e to the minus theta to the power of 5. And remember that was inside a big bracket. So now all we need to do is simplify this. So the 1 over 32 stays the same. We can simplify i to the power of 5. You remember earlier on we wrote down that i to the power of 4 was 1, so i to the power of 5 will be 1 times i. So we've just got an i in here. And then we can multiply out the bracket here. We've got e to the 5i theta. And then bring the sign, the minus sign, out to the front of the next term. So coefficient minus 5. And then we've got e to the 4i theta minus i theta. Next term. We've got the negative e to the minus i theta squared, so that will give us a positive here, so positive 10. And then we've got e to the power of 3i theta minus 2i theta. Next time we've got the negative term being cubed, so we're going to have a minus 10. And e to the power of 2i theta minus 3 i theta and then the negative is being raised to a an even power so that's going to give us plus 5 e to the i theta minus 4 i theta and then a an odd power so minus e to the minus 5 i theta so that simplifies that. So let's just tidy that up a bit. So this is fairly straightforward. e to the 5i theta minus 5. And all we're doing here is working out the bit in brackets. 4i theta minus i theta will be 3i theta. So 5e to the 3i theta plus 10 e to the i theta minus 10 e to the minus i theta plus 5 e to the minus 3 i theta and the last term just stays as it is on the previous line and then we need to think about what it is we're actually trying to prove so we want to have a sine 5 theta, a sine 3 theta, and a sine theta in our answer. So if we look back up at what we wrote down at the beginning, we know what sine theta is in terms of e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta, but we also know what sine 3 theta and sine 5 theta are, if we look at the sine n theta. So we're expecting e to the 5 i theta, e to the 3i theta and so on and that's what we've got so it's just a matter of rearranging what we've got and hopefully everything will work out so let's think about this we also want actually the 1 over 2i don't we to be involved in the sign so what we can do is if we instead of writing 32i 
we divide through by the 2i, so we've got 1 over 16, and then let's change this, the bracket to a square bracket. And then what I'm going to do is each of these is going to have a 1 over 2i in it. So you can see that 2i and 16 give us the 32i, so that's as it should be. And then let's start off with the e to the 5i theta. And along with that, we want the minus e to the minus 5i theta, because that's going to give us sine of 5 theta. And then looking at this in the order that we're trying to uh, get the answer, we've got uh, five lots of the e to the 3i theta. So let's take the 5 over 2i outside the bracket. And we've also got the plus, so let's make that inside the bracket a minus. So notice here I've got a minus sign outside the bracket because I'm looking ahead at the answer and I can see I want minus 5 sixteenths of sine 3 theta. So if I put the minus outside, everything will work out correctly. And finally, we've got... 10 e to the i theta and minus 10 e to the minus i theta. So we're going to have 10 over 2i e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. And we're nearly where we want to be. So we've got 16th and then we've got sine 5 theta. Then we've got minus 5 sixteenths sine 3 theta. And then we've got 10 sixteenths of sine theta. And of course 10 sixteenths is 5 eighths, so that is what we were asked to prove. So let's just write down The last line, so all that changes is that we've got 5 eighths instead of 10 sixteenths there.